Hi there! In today's video, we are going to continue to implement the paper direct speech to speech translation with discrete units. This is the paper that I had discussed in my past videos, and in the last video, we started to implement because the code is public. So, we went through several steps. We prepared the data and we formatted that data to feed into the model for training. We prepared the multitask data as well. So we have everything that we need for training the model and all of this was done in the previous video. And today we are going to continue to the next step which is finally training the model. This is again speech to unit translation model. So basically in order to train this model if we have everything that we need, which we discussed in the past video, we can simply run this and this will train the model and it will save the checkpoints in the local directory wherever we specify. So let's take a close look at the arguments that we need in order to run this command. So here we will use the fair seek train command and what it needs is all of these arguments. The first is obviously the data, wherever the data is stored. And if you recall, we created this data root folder in one of the steps in the previous video. And this contains all the data that we need. And then we need the config file. If you want to use the multitask data, then we also need the multitask config file. If you don't want to use the multitask, then you can simply remove this argument. But again, as the paper mentions, you will get better results if you use the multitask. So you can train it both ways, try what and see what, what you get. In my case, I will proceed with including the multitask. And then we keep this as is. And then we have the we, we keep this as is as well and then we are using speech to unit transformer fisher model and then we don't change this and then we simply specify that we are going to be training it on the train set and then if we have the validation set we will also specify the depth validation set and then here we are going to specify where do we want to save the model in our local machine and this is the learning rate and for now I'm just going to keep everything else as this and the optimizer is Adam optimizer and clip norm is 10 uh, maximum update uh, so this we will discuss in just a little bit because I, I did change the max update parameter and I'll show you why and this is the maximum number of tokens and then max target positions, update frequency, and all of those. So here they say that the update frequency, here they chose four because they are using four different GPUs to train this. So we are using a we are training it in a distributed fashion. But if you have just one GPU, you can just specify one. If you have three, specify three. So just change this parameter according to how many, however many GPUs you are using for training the model. Uh, okay, uh, okay, all right. So let's look at the parameters that I used when I ran this command. It's pretty much all the same except for just few things that I want to point out. Okay, again, uh, this is the same command. I like to I like to just store the commands in my local copy because that way because I'm running so many experiments so that way I don't have to populate the arguments every time I'm running the command. So it's just for my own convenience. Uh, we will just follow the one that says um, with multitask and I'm going to follow this one because the, he, here I was using only one GPU and here I am using a GPU cluster that has three different GPUs that I'm using so I'll just show you how I train 
on a GPU cluster using a cluster that has three GPUs. So here, uh, here I specify how, how which GPUs I want to use for training, and then I simply specify the command that we just saw in the previous slide in the previous page here on the GitHub. Okay, then I specify the data root. So this is nothing but the location where the data root folder is located on my local machine. And then I specify where the config file is located. And then I specify where the config multitask file is located. And then this is the same, this is the same, this is the same. And then for the vocoder, uh, I specify that I'm using code hi fi gam. So no change. And then no change here. Everything is the same up to this point. And then I specify that I have a train set and I have a dev set. And this again, I specify where I want to save the checkpoints. So this is the directory where all the checkpoints will be saved. Uh, learning rate I kept the same everything I kept the same and then max update okay uh, I did specify a couple things here I specified max epic so if max epic is how uh, how many epics you want to train for in the command that the authors have here on the github they don't specify max epic but they specify this max update so this is how this is how they are specifying when they want to stop the training in my case i want to specify the epoch so i included this parameter called max epoch and this is however many epochs you want to train it for in this case i am training it for 50 epochs and then this save interval i don't think the authors have this parameters yep it, they don't so basically when the model is training in this case for 50 epochs if we don't specify this save interval, it is going to save the checkpoint after each epoch. I don't want that in my case. So what I do is I say that save interval is 10. So uh, what it just means is that it's going to save the checkpoint after every 10 epochs. And obviously it is going to store the best uh, and the last checkpoint as well. So that's pretty much how the training is done if you run into any issues uh, while you're training i would suggest checking the um, multitask data to make sure that it's formatted correctly so basically you should be able to run training um, just fine if everything else before this step was formatted correctly and also in my particular case i ran into issues with my gpu cluster so just make sure that the GPUs that you're using, all of them are functioning fine. If not, then just use the ones that are functioning. In my case, my GPU cluster has actually four GPUs and I just kept running into problem bef uh, when I was trying to train on, on all of them. It took me some time to figure out that it was actually one of the GPUs, GPU ID zero that actually wasn't working. So I had to just, uh, exclude that and just distribute the training on three GPUs even though I have four GPUs on my cluster. So that took a few days for me to figure out but just throwing it out there in case you run into problems. I think the issue is not with this training itself but everything that we did before or just also the GPUs that you're using for training. So that's pretty much all after uh, for training and then after this after you train this, it will show you all the checkpoints again, uh, the best and the last as well. Into the they, they will be in the directory that you specify here for the save directory. So that's pretty much everything about training. So once we have trained the model, we can move on to using the model. So using the model means we can use it for inference. So let's say you have a uh, you have a audio in the source language and you want to find the discrete units in the target language using the trained model then we can follow these steps called inference 
and I will discuss this inference step in the next video. For now, we'll stop here and I hope you are still with me. If not, please feel free to ask questions in the comments below and I will try to answer those questions to the best of my knowledge. With that, thank you. And I just want to say that if you're, if you're following my channel and you find the content useful, please consider subscribing. I would be happy to have you as part of my channel. Thank you. And I will see you in my next video. Thank you.